Recently, a coworker sent me this, not the uh, message. Have any experience with floating labels on input text boxes? I really wanna use it because I think it's super smooth and tackles all the accessibility without uglifying forms. I responded, yes, I'll send you a code pin. And thought this will make a great video. So here we are, let's dive in. If you're new to the Self Teach Me channel, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer. If you're just getting into this space, sometimes it's hard to know where to start or what resources to trust. I wanna help you level up and get to where you wanna be. If this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. I'm gonna build this in CodePen. If you've never used CodePen before, it's okay. It's a website that serves a free code sandbox. As with most things, a few dollars will unlock more features, but if you wanna follow along with me today, you can do everything with the free account. Just go to codepen.io. If you wanna save your code, you'll need to sign up for a free account. Otherwise, you can just jump in as a guest. For what we're doing, we don't need JavaScript, so I'm gonna click on the down arrow in this JavaScript section and select minimize the JavaScript editor. Anytime I'm starting a new project, I like to start with the HTML. Then that gives me something that I can hang my styles on. In the HTML, the first thing that we need is a label and an input field. Then we wanna make sure that the browser knows that this label is for the first name. Doesn't look great, but the elements are there. Let's start with styling the label. If we give this a display property of block, this will make the label take up an entire line. It's almost as if label has a BR tag at the end. Let's change the color to blue. Give it a font of sans serif and change the size to 16 pixels. Okay, now let's style the input field. Even though we only have one input field, I'm still going to be specific in my styles. That way, if we ever come back and add a checkbox or a radio field, these styles won't affect that. So I'm gonna add these square brackets and say type equals text. These square brackets allow us to target a tag with an attribute. So you can see here we have type equals text. Then if you wanna target an email or phone field, you would actually need to add these to the list. Let's give this some styles. I'm gonna say border is one pixel solid gray. And then let's give this a font family of sans serif to match the label. We also wanna give it a font size of 16 pixels. Then I'm gonna make the height of our input 40 pixels and a width of 300. Let's give it a little bit of spacing on the inside of the field. So I'm gonna say padding zero, 10 pixels. Great, now it's starting to look a lot better. Now we just need to control the placement of the label. By default, we want the label to be on top of the input, directly on top of that placeholder text. Okay, let's add some styles to the label block. We give it a position of relative so that we're moving the label relative to where it is right now. And I'm gonna just start by saying 25 pixels from the top and 10 pixels from the left. You just need to dial in the numbers to get it lined up exactly. The easiest way to do this is to open your browser's developer tools. So within Chrome, you can go to View, Developer, Developer Tools, or you can hit Command-Shift-I, or you can also right-click on the item that you want to appear in the developer tools and go down to Inspect. So here we have our label. So I have that highlighted in the HTML over here. And now when I click on this value within the CSS editor, I can actually use my arrow keys to dial in that number. So it looks like 30 pixels is gonna do it and 11 pixels. The developer tools make it easier because you're not having to guess at the numbers, enter it into your code, save it, refresh in the browser, adjust, and then keep going through that entire process again until you get it just right. Instead, you can use the developer tools to dial in those numbers just right and then enter those exact values into your code only once. So we can update our top to 30 pixels and our left to 11 pixels. Uh, you'll notice that you can see where the label was originally here at the top. We still have that space above the input. You may have noticed that it's a little difficult to click inside that text input. You'll notice if I hover directly over the input field, my cursor is an arrow. I have to come to the edge of the input in order to get my cursor to change to a text selector. You may be wondering, what in the world? 
This is happening because the label is sitting directly on top of the input, blocking you from being able to click on it. If I give the label a background color of yellow, Now when you hover over the input field, it's a little bit more obvious where the cursor changes from an arrow to a text cursor. Fortunately, there's a CSS property that will tell the browser that we wanna be able to click through that label to the text input. We can say pointer events none. Perfect, you'll notice as I move my cursor around the input, it's a text cursor like I'd expect it to be and I can click on the input without any trouble. Let's remove this background yellow property and keep going. Next step, we want to be able to move the label when we click on the input to be able to type inside it. This is called the focus state because we're focusing on a particular input that we want to be able to type inside. In fact, if we had multiple fields, when you tab from one field to the next, you're changing which field you're focusing on. The one that you can actually type into is the current focus. Lucky for us, there is a pseudo selector called focus that will allow us to style the actual focus state of the input. So in the code, we can come down here and say, input type plus text focus. The only downside here is that we're targeting the input and we actually want to style the label when we focus on that particular field. In CSS, we can use a plus to style something right next to it. This is called a sibling. It looks look like this, label plus input, because we have the label and then the input is right next to it. Shoot, this still isn't right. Here we're still styling the input because it's the last thing that's listed. There's not really a way to select the label before the input. We can still make this work. Let's change the HTML so that the label is listed second. Now within our CSS, we can move this. So now we can target the label. Okay, before we style the focus state, let's go back and fix the positioning. The label is positioned relative to where it appears in the HTML. And since we move the label from appearing before the input to after, the numbers that we dialed in won't work anymore. As we're looking at this, there's now a gap below the input. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna add a paragraph of Lorem Ipsum. It's a little bit easier to see the gap between the input field and the paragraph of text. And that gap is technically where the label lives. And since we're using a position of relative, we're shifting the label relative to that spot. We can get around this by providing a negative margin bottom, but as I'm sure you're already thinking, this is getting very complicated. So let's make it easier on ourselves. Yes, please. Let's change the position on the label to absolute. That means we can say exactly where we want that label to be displayed. And that gap between the input field and the paragraph of text closed, which is great. So I'll click on this little arrow icon and we can make sure that, that our label is selected. And then we can click on this top value and use our up and down arrows to get this dialed in. So we hit tab, we go down to left. Looks like we need top 20 pixels, left 19 pixels. Now I'm gonna get rid of our paragraph of text and I'm gonna add a break tag and I'm gonna copy and paste this input and label field and change these values for last name. That way we can kind of see what happens when we have more than one field. Already there are a few things that I noticed. There's no space between the two fields, but maybe more importantly, the last name label is on top of the first name input. Hmm, what do you think is happening? The thing you have to remember about positioning is that it is relative. Well, what does that mean? Well, position looks at the parent element to see how it needs to behave. So it's relative to what the parent is doing. In our case, we don't have a wrapper div around the label or the inputs, and so it's looking at the page. Right now, it places the label 20 pixels from the top of the page and 19 pixels from the left edge of the page. We can fix this by adding a div around our input and labels so that even though it's positioned absolutely, it's relative to each of these items. And I'm deleting the break tag because a div will basically do the exact same thing since it's rendered as a block element. Okay, so I'm going to add a class of field to these divs just so we can make it easier to style these items. 
Okay, at the top of our CSS, let's add some styles for this field div. For my CSS declarations, I like to list these in the same order that they appear on the page. It makes it a little bit easier to find what you're looking for. And say field position relative. With that property added, the last name label is on top of the correct input. But before we adjust the spacing one more time, let's go ahead and add some spacing between these two fields because that will affect the placement too. So on our field styles, let's say padding 20 pixels, zero, zero, zero. This 20 pixels at the top will count for when our label moves above the input. And then let's add some margin to the bottom to give these two fields some breathing room. So I'm gonna say margin bottom 15 pixels. Pro tip, when I'm spacing things out, I try to only add spacing to the bottom. This makes it so much easier to troubleshoot because I know that that's where the spacing is. It's at the bottom and not the top. Consistency in code is always a good thing. In this case, the only reason that we added padding to the top was to account for the space for the label once it moves above the input. So it's technically part of that component and it's not really used to space out the two fields. Let's dial in that label hopefully for the last time. So I'm gonna click on this arrow button and I'm going to select the label again and let's dial these numbers in. So top, we can put at 32 pixels and left, we can put at 11. So let's update these numbers, so 32 and 11. Now we can go back to that focus state. When we click on the input, we wanna move the text up above that input and make it smaller. I'm going to say font size is 13 pixels, top zero, left zero. If I click on these, awesome. You can see that the label jumps up. So we can smooth out this transition and animate it with the transition property. Now, remember we add the transition property to the main element. If we add it to this focus selector, then it will only animate in one direction. I'll show you what I mean. So if I say transition top a quarter of a second, these in, out, and then we can actually add a second property to our transition with commas. So I'm say left quarter of a second, these in, out. So if I click on this, it animates up, which looks good, but then it jumps back down. So let's move this, I'm gonna cut that. And we wanna put this on our main label. So now if I click in, it animates up and down. This is probably a good time to also point out that technically I could say all, and it will animate any property that changes. This is nice and easy, but over time, this will cause performance issues because your browser will have to watch for everything. It's better if we can list these items out explicitly. Okay, so if we click on our input, you'll notice that the label animates, which is awesome. Sweet. So now we're getting somewhere. There's still a few more things that I wanna do. When I focus on an item, you see first name twice or last name twice. One is the label and the second one is the placeholder. This seems really redundant. I mean, I suppose you could just remove the placeholder, but that doesn't seem very accessible. Plus it doesn't help if you ever wanted to give this field a different placeholder text than the label. Say, enter your first name. Let's change the CSS so that the label is transparent until it moves above the field. On this label block, We'll add opacity is zero. And then on the focus block, we'll say opacity is one. And then we'll add this to the transition. So opacity, a quarter of a second, he's in, out. Okay, sweet. Good, good. I also want the placeholder text to disappear when we focus on that input. And there's actually a placeholder selector that we can use. Right under the input text styles, I'm gonna say input type equals text, colon, colon, placeholder. And by default, I want it to have an opacity of one. And then when we focus on it, I'm just gonna copy this block, say focus, 
going to change the opacity to zero. Then to smooth out that transition on the main element, we want to add transition opacity, quarter of a second, ease in, out. Sweet. So now it's animating just the way that we want it to. Okay, the last piece, let's add some text into our field. So if I type Amy and then tab over, you'll notice that the label animated back. This works and technically we could leave it like this, but really I want the label to stay above the text field if there's actually text in it so that there's some kind of association of what that text is representing. In the past, I've used JavaScript to handle this, but recently I learned about a new selector called placeholder shown. And this is so crazy and so cool, but basically it's styling the input when a placeholder text is visible. By default, you'll see the placeholder text when the text field is empty. So let's look at this a little bit more closely. I'm gonna comment out the opacity properties on our placeholder styles. I'm gonna say background is yellow. This will make it a little bit easier to see. This Amy field doesn't have a placeholder showing because there's text inside. And here we have last name. And I click onto it, the placeholder text is still appearing. And then once I start typing, you'll notice that placeholder text disappears. The placeholder shown selector is a good way to tell in CSS if that text input has a value. The only problem is it's looking to see if the placeholder is visible. We want the opposite. We wanna know when the placeholder is absent. Don't worry, I have the answer. You weren't worried, were you? I brought you this far. CSS has a not selector, which will allow us to target the opposite. This looks a little crazy when I type it in, but try to stick with me and I'll explain it. Let's start by targeting our label that follows any text field. Then we wanna use our placeholder shown selector and say anytime that the placeholder is not there, I'm gonna wrap that in a knot. We want this to happen. So we actually wanna use the same styles that we used for our focus state so that it our label stays in place. There's text entered. So let's give this a save and I'm gonna type some text and tab. Great, the label is staying where we want it. Let's get rid of this yellow background. And I'll get rid of these comments. Okay, then the last thing I wanna to do to bring this home is I only want the label to be blue when I'm focused on that particular input. And this one where we're checking to see if there's a value, I'm gonna change the color to gray. Then I'm gonna copy this line and say when we are focused on the input, change the color to blue. Okay, now the text is gray when it's not highlighted, and then when I remove it, it animates back. And that's a wrap. <sighs> if you like this video and want to see more videos on web design and development, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon if you want to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome.